want to tell you how to deal with an uneven trajectory. Let's see. Rather than define an uneven trajectory, how about I will just draw it? So what I mean by that is you're up here on the y-axis, and you're going to throw something along the x-axis. And you throw it from here. You give it an initial velocity there. There's the vector v naught, But you do it from some height y naught, And you want to keep up with how it falls, not just back down to y naught, but all the way back down to the x-axis. So to give you complicated problems, often you'll get problems where the height at which you start and stop is not the same. And there'll be a lot of questions about it. So let's look and see what we can uh, figure out about this problem. Let's see. The trick I want you to know for all these kinds of problems is to divide it into two trajectories. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to divide it basically along that line. There's the part where you get up to the apex, and there's the part after the apex where you fall. If you treat those as two separate problems, you can answer any question about the trajectory. So first, let's think about then how long does it take to get to the apex? All right, what is the time to the apex? That might be a question, but it's also a number that you critically need to answer pretty much um, any other question. And this is similar to the range problem we did before. Before, we said, well, we're, we have um, a component this way, that is v naught. Um, if this is theta naught, then it's v naught sine theta naught. And we have a component this way, v naught cosine theta naught. So really, it's just the case that we're taking our y velocity, dropping it to 0. So the time is v naught sine theta naught over g. So that's the time to the apex. And it's also good to start labeling these things. Ultimately, we're trying to figure out how far is it going to go. So let's call this uh, x1, and let's call this x2. These two paths, we're going to call 1 and 2. So I'm going to call this t1. t1 is basically the time it takes to get through path 1, the time it takes to get to the apex. Let's see. So you have that is v naught sine theta naught over g. And then you might say, well, what is x1? How far does it get? So far, this is similar to the problem we did before for just a normal trajectory that starts and stops at the same height. And for that, you basically do d equals vt. You know, the delta x is the velocity times delta time. So you take the x velocity, v naught cosine theta naught, um, uh, and multiply by v naught sine theta naught over g. Yeah, and you get what? So v naught cosine theta naught times v naught sine theta naught over g. And you say, wow, this is getting really complicated. And this brings up an interesting thing about doing physics. Right? When you're new to physics and you're trying to do problems on the AP exam, you like to plug in numbers and get numbers every time. So if you were given this problem, you would probably be given v naught and theta naught. And to get x, you would just calculate this time in seconds. Right? So this would be a number. And then you'd say, OK, I'm going to calculate uh, the x velocity. Right? I'd have that number, and I'd have this number, and I'd divide them, and I'd get this as a number. So right now I'm trying to tell you how to do the problem. So I'm not putting in all the numbers. We'll have examples where we put in the numbers. But this is sort of a young physicist, old physicist thing. Young physicists, they always want the number. Old physicists like me are like, why would you want the number? This is always works. We should always use the symbols. Okay? So someday you won't want to put in the numbers so badly. You can also go too far and become a theoretical physicist. And then they don't even want the symbols. So at some levels of theory, things are set equal to 1. Pi, equal to 1. Speed of light, equal to 1. G, equal to 1. Right? That way they don't have all these symbols in the way. Right? So let's not go that far. Let's keep the actual symbols. But my point really is if you're doing this problem, you won't get into this complicated of an algebraic expression. You will probably be putting in numbers every time. Uh, let's see. So there is x naught, uh, x1, and we, you know, we could simplify it a little bit. We could call it v naught squared cosine theta sine theta over g, which is similar to what we found before, because so far this looks like a normal trajectory problem. We haven't done the part where it falls 
too low yet. But anyway, there's a couple of important numbers. Now let's look at after the apex. What happens after the apex? So what I want you to see now is it's really an entirely new problem. The mass is here. The y velocity is 0. It's like we have a problem where we said we're at some height, and we just have our x velocity. And our x velocity isn't even changing. We know what it is. It's given this x velocity, v naught, cosine theta naught. And there's the reason I'm putting the naught on the thetas. The angle now is 0, right? But this quantity is the same. It's v naught times the cosine of the original angle. That's what we're calling it theta naught. The theta is actually changing. My point is, this is actually now a simpler trajectory problem with no y component. It's just simply dropping it with, with a horizontal velocity. So let's see. Um, the main thing we need now is this y max. All right. I'll call that y max. y max is y naught. All right. So um, how high it uh, started plus how high it got in, the, in part one. Right? So we calculated, what did we calculate? We calculated t1 and we calculated x1. We actually need to calculate y1. Right? So it's y not the initial height plus y1. So y max is y not plus y1. So we need to figure out how high the ball got above its initial height y not. So you're probably given y not in the problem as a number. We just got to know how high it went. Well, we did that before when we did the trajectory. In this case, we would just say it's y naught plus, and we have to do the y position kinetics. Uh, v y naught t plus 1 half at squared, or in this case, minus 1 half gt squared. So v y naught is v naught sine theta naught. Um, t is v naught sine theta naught over g. So you multiply those, and you'd get uh, v naught squared sine squared theta naught over g. So that's the vt term. And then minus 1 half gt squared, minus 1 half g. And then t squared, oh my goodness, is v naught squared sine squared theta naught over g squared. And just like when we did the trajectory before, these two terms, remember, they combine. And this is half of that. And they come out. And the g's cancel. You remember all that, right? So, so the point is, you'll do a lot of this numerically. It won't look so ugly. But you combine those terms, and it's just a half of that term. So it's v naught squared sine squared theta naught over 2g. Cancel. So that's y max. And you would do that numerically. And you would have y max. Maybe it started at 10 meters, and it got one more meter up, so 11 meters. And now you have <coughs> the simple drop problem for the second half. When you want to know how far did it go in x2, well, then you need to figure out t2. Right? So we got y max. Now let's figure out um, t2 uh, equals what? Well, t2 is how long it takes something to drop uh, the distance y max. Right? So to find t2, so to find t2, you'd say y max equals minus 1 half gt squared. Because that's one-dimensional kinematics. Um, uh, how long does it take it to drop that far? And you'd turn around and solve it, and you'd get what? So two. Uh, so t would be two y max over the square root of two y max over g. So t two would be the square root of two y max over g, like that. Um, and then you'd say, okay, I have t two. Now what is x two? So find t2 and find x2. All right? x2 is just delta x is vt. All right? So we know it's still going along at v naught cosine theta naught. All right? So x2 is v naught cosine theta naught, whatever number you had for that, times what you've now found to be t2, times the square root <coughs> of 2y max over g. All right, v naught cosine theta naught, yes. That is correct. So this is the completely symbolic way to do it. As I said, you'll be plugging in numbers as you go. 
I'm really just trying to show you the idea. If you have a complicated trajectory, break it into two trajectories, the front and the back, and then you can solve it.